So good afternoon, everyone, and many thanks for joining us. My name is Efi Saltidu, and I'm the Pedagogical Coordinator at School Education Gateway. I would like to welcome you on this webinar on building um, school-based learning communities for MOOC-based learning. Uh, let me tell you a bit of a backstory to this webinar so you get rightly introduced to the topic. As you probably already know, the Teacher Academy of School Education Gateway offers massive open online courses, MOOCs, for teachers for several years now. In 2019, we thought that we could improve in this in the way we support teachers attending these uh, courses. Although we are aware of the benefits uh, that these uh, courses offer, uh, we are also aware of the struggles some teachers face in this regard in order to benefit from these online professional development opportunities. Uh, low English language skills or low digital competences, for example, can definitely affect your experience in online courses, making it, making it quite daunting to participate. So we felt like we had to do something about this. Uh, we wanted to find a good mechanism to support teachers who don't have this type of confidence or competences to get on board with our courses. That's why two years ago uh, we, are, we launched a small pilot with eight teachers from different European countries and we work with them to address this problem. One of the key things that they did during these years was the development of study, study groups at school that take the, uh, that take the MOOCs together with their colleagues. Uh, in this way, they managed to provide and find all the necessary support at local level from peers. So with this way, the international uh, European element of the MOOC comes into the local context of the school. Out of this work, a lot of interesting resources and insights have come, uh, and that's actually the purpose of today's webinar, to share these experiences with you. Uh, before giving the floor to the speakers, I would like to inform you that this work is continued. We are having now a new group of pilot teachers who have to test the study groups and think of implementation schemes following uh, either a teacher academy or uh, e twinning online course and come back to share the results. So we will keep you posted with our news in this area, so stay, stay tuned. Without further ado, I will uh, I would like to welcome the first two speakers, the teacher Elena Petsi and the teacher Christina Nicoleta, who were both members of the first pilot group and very successfully uh, they managed to create study groups at their schools, inviting colleagues to learn and develop together. So today they will share their experiences with you. After this presentation, Eugenia from European Schoolnet will tell us more about the impact the local study groups had in the EU Code Week online bootcamp. In the meantime, please feel free to share your comments and questions in the chat and we will make sure to address them by the end of this webinar. Elena, Christina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Effie, and thanks to uh, School Education Gateway and Teacher Academy for inviting us. I hope you can hear me properly and I will immediately share uh, my screen with you. I hope you can see it. I will put it in presentation mode and I will uh, give the floor to uh, Christina. So I'm Elena. Hello, I'm Christina Nicoleta from Romania. I hope you can hear me uh, well, too. Uh, we will start our uh, presentation by trying to uh, know each other better, to see uh, who is with us today. So, uh, Elena, if you can share the, the yes, slides. Yes, of course. Here you are. So, you can go to slido.com and enter the code. And uh, the first question is, what country are you from? Please uh, do that. We are very, very interested in seeing uh, who is with us today.
Okay, so the winner is someone from Croatia, then Lithuania. Somebody put the note <laughs> inside yeah. the answer, please. You answer with your country. So we have all Tunisia, Lithuania, Serbia, Croatia. Please. Austria. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a good, uh, a good, well, a good number of European countries, and not only European. Croatia. That means there are more than one teacher because the name is in big letters, meaning there are more teachers from Croatia here with us. So uh, please enter slido.com, Romania. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Okay, we will wait uh, a little more and then we will go to the next uh, question, but please. So join at slido.com and enter the code. You can see it in, uh, in the screen, 853-730. And then you enter the name of your uh, country. Okay, someone from Spain, Turkey, and Greece. Maybe oh. 20 minutes more, or 20 seconds more before we go to, to the next question of our Slido. Okay, Poland, welcome Poland. <laughs> Thank you, we will come back to this, uh, to this question uh, later. So we go now to the next question. Have you participated in any MOOCs? You have, uh, yes, many of them, no, but I want two. Yes, some of them, and yes, only one. Okay, yeah, so the, the majority is someone who is already expert in a way, or at least you already know what a MOOC is. Okay. Okay, 16 answer. 17. Some of them is the, the most uh, answered here. Okay. I think we can go to the last question. What was the most challenging thing about the online courses for you, for those who attended MOOCs? So uh, here you can answer uh, about your own experience in uh, participating in online courses or MOOCs. Waiting for your opinion. Okay. The language, it changes <laughs> in style anywhere, any place you can access meeting new people, motivating myself, the language, of course. Um, there are answer that, answers that uh, somehow are very frequent in uh, um, everybody's experience about participating uh, in uh, online courses. And we will talk about this uh, during the webinar. Yeah, language. language, yeah, time. <laughs> English, new experience. 
Okay, maybe we will wait a little yeah. more. 13 answers till now. Yeah, the answers you gave are mainly the, the main challenges that everyone, each of us, found uh, when taking a MOOC or when deciding to, to follow some online course. Yes, time and motivation. Yeah, this is really uh, a big challenge. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for your answer. Thank you, Elena. OK, so we can come back to our presentation. And Christina, the floor is yours. OK, um, I will start by um, uh, telling you about this uh, great uh, course that uh, was hosted by School Education Gateway. Uh, building school-based learning communities for MOOC-based learning. Um, we uh, had a, a work workshop, a webinar uh, then too. Uh, and this, uh, this course will be um, maybe in the future again on the list on School Education Gateway. So be sure not to lo uh, lose it because it is a great, a great uh, course about uh, uh, attending a MOOC in your school with your colleagues, helping each other to, to go uh, through it. Yeah, it's a self-paced course, so it's uh... It's open. You can you can follow it at your own pace. So yeah, don't miss the opportunity if you're interested in building school-based learning communities, which is something that we are uh, explaining you right now. Okay, the context of our pilot project. Uh, I will start by. Uh, telling you about the connection between School Education Gateway and the twinning that uh, was uh, from the beginning. But uh, as you uh, already know, maybe, uh, the countdown for the European School Education Platform has started. So um, the both platforms, School Education Gateway and the twinning Platform, will merge into the European School Education platform, retaining your favorite content and expanding on it in a single modern and accessible space. So uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can improve yourself, uh, you can engage in European projects, grow in your profession, get informed about education policies, make your opinion count and join the biggest teacher community in Europe, uh, which is uh, e-training. Okay, and the second step of the context is how the School Education Gateway pilot uh, was born. And uh, as Effie told you at the beginning of this webinar, and Christina also uh, underlined, um, we um, formed a group. We were uh, two teachers who uh, took part in this uh, pilot um, launched by Teacher Academy in 2019. And uh, we worked on how um, work or how attend online courses together with our colleagues at school, for instance, or in any case, uh, how to use online courses in a more systematically way to support teachers' professional development. So uh, this was uh, our, our group, our former group, and as Effie has underlined, um, in this uh, year, the, uh, 2021 has seen the, the birth of another uh, pilot group to, to keep on working and on reflecting on how, uh, how we can work and how we can learn together with our colleagues.
The pilot project was coordinated by two great experts, Nair Carrera. Uh, you, as you can see, uh, uh, she coordinated uh, this pilot, but also the EU Code Week initiative, uh, uh, which uh, Eugenia will tell you about later. And also Benjamin Hertz, uh, which is a senior pedagogical manager of the European Schoolnet uh, Academy. They uh, guided us and uh, helped us to, to become a, a very, um, a very uh, great group of teachers, very committed to help our uh, colleagues in, uh, in uh, attending MOOCs and online courses. Uh, at the beginning, uh, there were 10 teachers selected. You can see uh, our very first meeting when we started to know each other and uh, to develop our action plans to, to involve our colleagues in um, uh, MOOCs and online courses. Um, only eight teachers, as Effie said, uh, uh, finished the, the pilot and uh, uh, were successful in uh, implement uh, it in uh, their schools. Yeah, and we all know that uh, between 2019 and 2021, there's 2020 in between. And uh, this affected a lot also our pilot, because as uh, we said before, in 2019, you've seen the picture, we met in present, we met face to face in Brussels uh, in order to to start collaborating, to start sharing ideas and to start um, implementing the, the project, the pilot itself. So what happened in 2019, we will explain you uh, in, in a while, in a second. But uh, yes, we have to, to be aware and to, to remember what happened in 2020 and also in 2021. So two different, two, two completely different contexts and way of learning and way of uh, following, taking uh, courses. So I will start with the face-to-face -face, uh, phase in 2019. That was between March and December 2019. Uh, I started with a promotion of the pilot in my school. Uh, I asked for head teacher support. I uh, um, gave I, uh, a press survey to, to my colleagues. I assisted them with uh, registering and surfing the school education gateway portal. As you can see in the pictures, we, uh, we had some peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer sessions. Uh, and um, then uh, we started group studies during the modules. Uh, what was um, a little bit uh, special in my school uh, was that uh, at the end of the MOOC, we, we collected our outcomes, our lesson plans in, in a database that uh, uh, all our colleagues uh, could access and use in, uh, in uh, their teaching in school. And then we had a post survey and open uh, door lessons um where we um implemented what we have learned during MOOCs and invited our colleagues to see that uh, the MOOCs uh, had a very uh, uh great impact in our teaching and uh, uh it was uh, it was uh, a, a very big plus for for participating in the pilot what worked well uh, the other pictures here you can see we started um, group work we have worked uh, in um, uh, two shifts in the morning and in the afternoon so i i um, uh, me i i have met uh, my colleagues um, 
twice uh, a week in the morning and in the afternoon uh, to help them. Uh, but uh, I also um, want to tell you that head teacher support was uh, essential. I use uh, social media to promote uh, the MOOC and uh, uh, somehow the um, uh, news went outside the school and uh, teachers from uh, my town and uh, my region started to, uh, to join the MOOC and to join our study group. Um, we used collaboration and group management tools. We worked together step by step, module by module, and we uh, collaborated with English IT teachers in school. But uh, at some point, even students and our own uh, children helped with uh, the biggest problems, the language barrier and the IT uh, skills. Uh, low I IT skills in uh, some of my colleagues. And uh, the last set of pictures is uh, a session I organized with teacher from outside of my school that uh, uh, wanted to, to take part in the MOOC and uh, uh, asked for help. Uh, and what didn't work so well, of course, uh, as uh, Elena already told you, uh, sorry, um, lack of time, time manage or time management skills, IT and internet surfing skills that needed improvement, language barrier and la lack of self motivation, like in your answers in our slide <laughs> earlier. Thank you, Elena. Yeah, and uh, as for my experience, well, uh, Christina is a teacher from Romania. I'm a teacher from Italy, but I will um, I will tell you that our experiences were largely uh, superposable. They we had more or less the same experience. Uh, while Christina took another um, MOOC, I Im I decided to implement with my colleagues at school. Uh, the introducing project-based learning in your classroom MOOC uh, because this was um, one of the great needs for for my school and my colleagues decided to uh, to invest their time in taking this course. So um, I don't want to repeat what Christina has already underlined. Uh, I totally agree with her about what worked well, what didn't work so well and um, these were the main challenges I faced and how I tried to solve them. Uh, so it's something that you already uh, wrote in the Slido, um, time, time constraints, uh, there's no good period of time at school. Teachers are always very busy. Uh, we took the, the course in September, October, thinking that it was a good period, but it, in fact it was not. And uh, the, the main challenge was that they couldn't do the homework, the, the, the home assignment. So uh, this was the first challenge. Um, English. English is and was and is a real problem for um, a good, a large part of Italian teachers, the, the older, the older ones. Uh, we don't feel very at ease with English language. Well, of course, not for everyone, but for many of my colleagues, yes, it was a problem. And also ICT was a problem. Uh, bear in mind that this course was taken before for uh, pandemic. So uh, it's true that uh, pandemic, uh, as suppose, and has been uh, a huge problem, but uh, in a way, uh, I can say that as for ICT skills, it has represented a challenge uh, which should be overcome. So, um, well, I will tell you later about this, this fact, but before uh, COVID time, ICT was uh, quite uh, 
a big problem for uh, some of my colleagues. How um, I try to solve these uh, these challenges? Uh, well, uh, thanks to uh, group work and meeting face to face, uh, teachers could do the activities, could uh, work together during the on-site meetings. Um, this, of course, led to to the need for a reshaping of the of the path of the the structure of the course itself. I uh, summarized the main concepts. I provided time for the reflection of the topics, and um, also um, I tried to rearrange the development of the activities during the meetings themselves. So it was um, well. Uh, I tried to to rearrange and to reshape the structure of the of the modules, and uh, meeting face to face, of course, helped teachers those teachers with less language and or ICT skills. So, uh, working together was of great help for all those teachers who didn't feel at ease both with English and or ICT. Uh, the opinion of my uh, colleagues, of the teachers who took part in the in the MOOC, in the in the pilot, for them, um, one the, the biggest uh, success for the for the course was to meet together, to follow the course, to work together. Um, I don't know if in other countries, but in Italy we are not. Um, I'm uh, speaking about. I'm, talking about, uh, above all, uh, secondary school teachers, we are not so used to work together. So working together to take this course uh, was really enjoyable and uh, very productive. And all the teachers who participated in the course um, said that this was the added value of the course itself. Uh, well, having a tutor, of course, was um, was very useful and helped a lot and uh, about the content of the of the MOOC they took they appreciated a lot the use of short videos and the um, the inputs they had to to further develop these ideas and to um, to reflect to deepen the um, the ideas uh, provided by the by those videos for them, again, what didn't work so well, uh, time, time constraints, both at school and personal level, often prevented them to complete the, the activities. Uh, but I have to say that um, almost all the teachers who took the course, who met together face to face, they uh, did complete the course. So. Um, even though the, the period at school was very busy, they succeeded in uh, completing the course. So now uh, we would like to ask you, uh, you've got the floor, uh, we, we have explained you our experience, but uh, as uh, you said that you you've taken some online courses. Um, please do reflect if you um, if you have ever taken a course, an online course together with other colleagues. And uh, if not, do you think that it could be interesting to try this way of training to, to take a course together with some colleagues? And uh, the third question is, what would you like to find in such an experience? Because this, um, this pilot is uh, exactly about this idea. Um, to take some kind of um, professional development, but together with some other colleagues, not alone, which is something that you can do uh, whenever you want. You, you can take a MOOC, but um, thinking about taking a MOOC, an online course together with uh, some colleagues. So if you want to, to give your um, your idea, please do tell us your experience and uh, tell us what 
what would you like to find in such an experience to if you would like to try this way of training and so on so i hope you can write um, in the padlet i think i've opened it to to everyone so if you i see over there that there are some people uh, joining and writing something. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, to, to join a study group to follow a MOOC. You can also um, create or set your um, own study group at school with your colleagues. You, you can choose a course, for instance, and try to, uh, to take it together. Okay, so let's see if uh, someone else is uh, writing down. In any case, we will come back to this uh, Padlet at the end of our um, of our explanation, and I think that we can go. Yeah, I would like to follow more. Okay, so um, we'll let you write down and uh, meanwhile we can go um, further and Christina uh, will tell you the, the experience in the following two years. Yes, thank you Elena. Uh, as you already said, it was a totally different phase. After the pandemic started, we moved online so all the uh, study group couldn't uh, work face to face as usual. We started a um, new, uh, new uh, study group. Uh, I created a Facebook group and uh, more than 100 members uh, joined. They were not only from my school also, but it was a big group from Romania. And uh, at some point, uh, teachers from uh, Republic of Moldova joined us because um, we shared the same language. So I started to post um, uh, video tutorials in uh, Romanian language to help uh, colleagues um, I organized Zoom meeting after each uh, module um, uh, opened. Uh, I created announcement and polls, news and articles, uh, question and answers, because uh, the group was uh, so big and uh, very active. Uh, I invited two of my colleagues to be also administrators of the group. So uh, we were uh, three mentors at uh, some point. And uh, we, we managed to, to um, go through the MOOC successfully. Uh, this time organizing the um, group meetings uh, online. Okay, and uh, as for me, it was, again, it was the same idea. So one of the best um, results and uh, the best product of our pilot, of our um, first study group, was that we had a lot of ideas and we tried to, to put in practice those ideas um, each of us in our own uh, situation. And um, as Christina said, in Italy too, I tried to, uh, well, I went online, we went online, and uh, I, uh, well, we did our meetings on Meet, on Google Meet, but the, the, the idea is the same. Uh, we we moved together, we had MOOCs together, and um, doing it online, having the opportunity to to having this MOOC, uh, to, 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 to take these MOOCs online, helped a lot of teachers who couldn't um, join us in presence 
uh, in the previous uh, section, the previous experiment, well, uh, we had a lot of teachers who joined us online. And as Christina said, uh, we've got a huge number of participants because they could follow from home and they, they had the opportunity to join. So the, the online phase in 2020, uh, from March to October, was to um, to use the digital platform of our regional uh, office of education, and uh, we organized. I organized some meetings via Meet, and um, the same uh, as Christina said. I um, I got the help uh, from. Um, some teachers, three, four teachers who uh, followed the, the first uh, section, the first episode, the first chapter of the, um, of the pilot, and as they already knew what was the, the structure of the, of the, the, the MOOC itself, uh, so they helped me to, to manage the, the group. Um, as Christina said, I uh, translated into Italian some parts of the MOOC and we worked on shared uh, presentations, shared padlets, shared learning diaries. Um, I mean, uh, this online phase was characterized by a great uh, willingness of sharing, sharing experiences, sharing tools, sharing documents and so on. And this middle management staff, as Christina said, was very useful to keep all the participants together, to, to keep things in order, and uh, this was a very, very positive uh, aspect. Well, uh, starting from uh, this January, this year, uh, as I worked um, part-time uh, also at a regional uh, office of education, um, our regional office decided to uh, officially recognize any MOOC of Teacher Academy, European School Net Academy, and also e-twinning. Um, so when we uh, when uh, Teacher Academy, for instance, uh, publishes uh, a course and launches a course, our regional office offers um, tutorship. I can say so. And at the end of the of the path, uh, people who attended, so who successfully attended uh, the the MOOC on Teacher Academy platform, they will receive um, certification of completion uh, of the activities also uh, by the um, by our regional office. So uh, it's, um, well, what we did was to create a, a, a facilitating and accompanying pathway for Italian teachers taking any of these courses. So uh, here you can you could hear some reflections uh, of the participants, some ideas and so on. But uh, basically, the the ideas are what we we have explained to you now. So from our experience, you can see some advice, some. Um, thoughts that uh, will help you in attending courses with your colleagues. Start with a survey on the school staff needs on professional, professional development in order to choose the most suitable MOOC for your colleagues' needs. A designate a responsible person to monitor the whole team's progress because we uh, lack self-motivation sometimes and we need somebody to push a little uh, to push us a little in uh, in attending the courses together everybody achieves more set up group studies as participants can support and motivate each other you you so that um, this um, group studies can be face to face or online be very careful with time management, tasks and deadlines, because if the course is live and it uh, has a, a deadline for your tasks and you missed it, you won't receive the certificate. So um, it is important to, to um, 
do the time management properly. Uh, and a good idea is to create repositories with the materials created during the MOOCs to be used uh, in other uh, educational contexts in your, uh, in your school to help other teachers to benefit from the MOOC, even though they maybe didn't participate in, uh, in the MOOC. These are our... Uh, our uh, ad advice for you yeah and uh, yeah what Christina was saying at the beginning always ask for your head teacher support because you know it's crucial in any school if you don't work with your head teacher support you you won't go very very far so uh, this is a real a really really important aspect so uh, i was saying before um we will uh, focus on the padlet later on so i hope you have written something and uh, yeah, Marisa and uh, Maya uh, I've often participated in online courses with other colleagues. I really like to try this way. Yeah, yeah. So we we suggest you to do to to to, to have such an experience because it's it's really motivating and you um, you will. Uh, get to know even better your colleagues and you you can create a, a more positive uh, learning environment and and so on so and also Marisa from Piacenza uh, yes um, a mock on shared leadership on teacher academy open it twinning okay so uh, Okay, so a lot of ideas. Um, yeah, your thank full... you, Maya and Mila from Moldova. Moldova is also with uh, with us here. I I saw on the Slido. Okay, okay. Yeah, so the the, the idea. So these posts are uh, very positive. the The idea is. Uh, let's try and let's move together. <laughs> this was where what we we said at the end of the of our pilot, uh, trying to, uh, to 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 build something uh, together with our colleagues. So as we said at the beginning of this webinar, uh, this uh, MOOC is an open-ended, I mean, it's a self-paced course, so you can take it whenever you want, and you can see here the experience we we had as a pilot group. So if, uh, if you're looking for some ideas, suggestion, advice, and so on, uh, uh, don't hesitate and uh, take a look at this at this course. And yes, of course, let's move together uh, to to work better with our colleagues and in our schools. Okay, so I stop sharing my screen. I hope. Thank you both. Thank you for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you for, for sharing the experiences and also uh, some suggestions and advice to the participants who are attending this webinar today. I would also like to highlight the fact that this kind of activities, apart from uh, providing the support for professional development, as you very correctly said, they also provide the opportunity to develop a more collaborative culture at school level and that's that's great because this also may lead to other activities that can uh, first of all develop us as professionals and also improve teaching practices and learning practices all of course for the benefit of, of the students so yeah thank you very much before leaving of course and as uh, promised uh, i would like also to invite my colleague eugenia uh, to share more about the impact the local study groups had in the eu code week uh, online bootcamp 
because as part of this MOOC, they uh, they decided to develop uh, to invite participants to develop study groups and uh, join this uh, MOOC together. So Eugenia, the the floor is yours. In the meantime, if you have any questions for the for for Christina and Elena, please feel free to post them in the chat, and we will make sure to address them. Thank you very much, Effie, and thank you as well for the invitation to join this afternoon. It was also very interesting to hear your, your experiences, Christina and Elena, leading the, um, this study group. So, so thank you very much for that. Um, so as Effie just mentioned, I wanted to give you a bit of an insight into the impact and the results of the study groups that we conducted or that we form part of the latest EU Core Week MOOC. So my name is Eugenia and I'm the course coordinator of this MOOC, and I just want to give you a bit of an insight into that. So first of all, I wanted to give you a bit of context on of the course. So as I mentioned, this MOOC was uh, launched within the EU Core Week project. And this MOOC was launched from the 27th September or run from the 27th September to the 27th October. So these are very recent results and very much in tune with what's happening lately in autumn in the schools. Um, the MOOC counted with three modules, so it's not a very long MOOC. And in total, we had approximately 1,900 participants. Um, of these, 175 were part of a study group, so that's about 9%. I'm sharing these numbers to let you know that these results are with a very small group of people who are part of the study group, so that you understand that these not uh, they don't not all of the course participants on the MOOC were part of a study group, just a small percentage, and as you can see, it's 9%. Um, and just to get an idea as well, the MOOC participants or a target group of this MOOC were as well school teachers of all levels and all subjects and the topic was coding and computational thinking. So this is a bit the context into which we launched this MOOC. Um, so why also Elena and Christina also touched this topic, but I wanted to bring it a bit closer to our project and some of the reasons why we saw the benefits of actually launching the study groups, because before we had launched, of course, online courses as part of the project, but we hadn't done study groups before, so why? First of all, we wanted to localize the impact of the project. So in, within the project, we're launching online training courses, online hackathons, as well as school label scheme, as well local communication plans. So this was our chance to bring these online courses and to bring the European dimension, as Effie was explaining at the beginning, a bit closer to the local level or to the school level. So this was really important to us. As well, we wanted to respond to the feedback that we had received in previous courses of the project where participants had mentioned that they would like to see more practice, more activities, but as well the possibility to work together on the final course assignments. As well, we wanted to leverage a network of active teachers that we had within the project and that many projects also have. Teachers who have expertise on the topic, but as well expertise on teacher training and teachers who can also exploit their own network of teachers in their own school or school district or even countries. And as well, we had this uh, motivation of increasing the completion rate of our online courses because our completion rate was very much in line with other MOOCs of uh, European Schoolnet Academy and School Education Gateway. But we thought, OK, maybe there's a chance to drive up these numbers a little bit and to see more people going on to obtain the certificates and providing a bit more tailored support. So this is why we decided to go forward with the study groups. And so how we went about it and very quickly from the course coordination what we did is we launched an open call for study group leaders that means that we recruited people same as in the pilot as Elena and Christina were mentioning and we basically asked them a little bit in this application to tell us what they were planning for as a study group for example how many meetings or how frequent they would actually be able to host them but as well what was the motivation and their experience and as Elena just mentioned we also make sure to ask them where they had the agreement of the headmaster and the head teacher because this was a key thing and something incredibly important to launch these courses so this was very important for us to get to know before we selected our study group leaders um, moving forward with the presentation, by the way, I may refer to study group leaders as SGL. So what I mean by this is the leaders of the study groups, such as Elena and Christina themselves. As well, before the course started, started we, pro, uh, produ um, we produced some documents to support our study group leaders. For example, we provided a role description and expectations document where we actually gave them some tips and tricks on how to get started and what we expected to, from them as study group leaders. And as well, we provided a course roadmap. We also had initial study group leaders meeting to which, by the way, Christina and Elena very kindly supported us and help. And in this meeting, we basically answered the questions of those who had applied to become study group leaders, but as well got them in touch with the technical team of the European Schoolnet Academy, where the MOOC was being launched. And as well, we got them in touch with ourselves, with the course coordinators, so that they could ask questions and manage their expectations and actually decide for themselves where they wanted to move forward or not. 
And last but not least, we of course invited them as well to add their own activities. Yeah, sorry, I will speak, uh, speak slower. And as well, we wanted to um, invite them to create their own activities so that they could actually have a bit of ownership over the course content. And this actually turned very nicely because over the, the course content, we were actually able to implement the activities and materials of the study group leaders. In practice, so once, um, once we got started and before I wanted to um, just basically show you a little bit of the documents that we serve with them, you can see there the role description and expectations where we actually gave them some tips and tricks into how to recruit teachers, how to organize a meeting, how does a meeting look like. And as well, you can see there a course roadmap that, that was there only with the study group leaders and that gave them a bit of an idea of the course content so that they could prepare the meetings and could also prepare in advance the course deadlines and the course um, and also the course milestones. Um, so once the course started and after the course started, so how did we keep in touch with our study group leaders? Because of course we didn't just let them be and do their own thing. We wanted to make sure that they were, that we answered their questions. Um, oh, can you not see me? Oh, Eleonora mentioned you can. Yeah, okay, Christina. Okay, probably can. it's okay, but maybe something on my end. Oh, right, it's okay. okay. Good, thank you. Um, so we also wanted to make sure that the study group leaders had support throughout the course and that they didn't feel alone. So, for example, we had communication with them via email and via the course forum with information, with reminders, and as well to make sure that they that we answered their questions and that they felt supported. As well, in each module, we had a section specific for the study group leaders. This means that no other course participants had access to this section. And in this section, we offer an outline of a meeting as well, tips and tricks, and very importantly, Padlet, where they could share their experiences and share with each other their progress, their questions, their challenges, and as well, motivate each other. As well, we poked a focus, especially now after the course has finished, on promoting their work. So this means that we often invite them to code week events to speak about their experience, but as well, we ask them to share their um, experience on the, code, the project uh, blog, and as well, we offer a specific certificate for them. And as well, we carried out a feedback and results survey, which results I'm going to be sharing with you just in a minute. And as well, we're having a final study group leaders meeting where we want to reflect with them on the experience, kind of get feedback for future courses and so on and so forth. So basically, this comes to say that we just make sure that they feel supported throughout the whole process and that we are there to ask, to answer questions and as well to get feedback from ourselves and improve as we go and improve especially during the course. You can see now on the screen one of the Padlets that uh, with the experience of our study group leaders, this is an example of a Padlet that was actually shared with the study group leaders throughout the course. We had one of these weekly so that we could monitor what was going on as well solve questions and that they could actually motivate each other in their progress. Um, and very importantly, and something that I wanted to focus on is the impact and the results. So as I mentioned, the course finished on the 27th of October. So now I can actually give you a bit of insight into what actually happened with these study groups and what actually were the results and, very, and also how did the group look like. So in total, we had 26 study groups based on 10 different countries. Um, the size of the groups varied quite a lot. We had groups as big as 30 members and groups as small as two members. By an average, it's about seven members. So you can see that in average, smaller groups tend to be the norm. Those who were 30 were very much the exception and normally no, they, they, they didn't tend to be more than 10. These groups were integrated mostly by teachers, of course, as they were at school level. Um, basically, and the majority of the groups involved primary school teachers, so 61% of groups involve primary school teachers, then we had as well 34% of the groups that involve secondary school teachers, and 19% of the groups um, actually involve pre-primary school teachers. The numbers do not add up to 100%, that means that the groups were varied, so it's not that um, each group had just one teacher from one school level, since the MOOC actually covered all the school levels. As well, very interestingly, interestingly, one group actually included headmasters, which I think was a very interesting experience for us to see and to directly involve them, not just to have their agreement and support, but as well to involve them in the group. And also we saw their profiles as members of the group, such as, for example, librarians or ICT coordinators. Um, in practice, how did this took place? So we encouraged our study group leaders to hold regular meetings with their group. Mostly they had a one or two weekly meetings. Each module, each week, sorry, the course would open one module. So we encouraged them to have at least one meeting per week. Normally the groups met between nine to two times in total. That means before the course started until the course ended. On average, they met about four times in total. 
And so this is a very interesting period and Christina and Elena have mentioned this a little bit because in this autumn, of course, schools have different policies and approaches towards distance learning and this affected the groups. So 70% of the groups chose one way or method of meeting and stuck to that, but 30% very interestingly actually varied the way that they met. So that means that sometimes they would meet online, sometimes they would meet face, face to face. Um, so 61% of the groups actually managed to meet at least once face to face, which is actually a very positive result. 50% um, met online at least once and 26% of the groups actually met um, in a hybrid method, which means that some of these meetings were held with some participants on site and some participants connecting remotely. What's really positive to see is that actually most groups, so 84%, had most members attending regularly each and every meeting, which actually goes to say that in general, study group members saw value in attending these meetings and so it actually productive. So it's actually a very nice number to see there and to see the, the results of this. And you can see actually a screenshot of one of the study group uh, meetings. And very interestingly, certification. So as many of the online courses that we launched, of course, there was a final course assignment. Now, before this autumn, normally for this project MOOCs, this final course assignment, um, this final course assignment was to be done individually. So you had to do your own activities, submit it individually. Now, responding to the feedback, and because also we had these study groups, we allowed them to, or we gave the possibility to actually work together on this final course assignment. And 16 groups out of 26, 16 groups chose this option and the members worked together either with the whole group or in a smaller groups within the in a smaller groups within the, the study group. This is actually really positive because as I was mentioning, that means that the study group members in general did so the positive side and just saw the advantage of working together within these study groups. In total, 63% of those members of the study groups went on to obtain a certificate. This is actually not the highest number, but it's actually really positive when you compare it to the average completion rate of other um, online courses. So just to give you an idea, I do not have right now the completion rate since we just finished of this particular course, but we ran a very similar MOOC just last autumn, the Deep Dive MOOC, and 21% of those people who registered to this MOOC went on to obtain the certificate. Now, of course, this data is a little bit biased, of course, because not everyone who registers actually um, starts the course. So to give you a bit of a closer data, I can tell you that 43% of those who registered to this online course, that was fully online, went on to obtain a course certificate. Whichever data we choose to look at, whichever we think is actually closer to the actual what happened, is still 63% is still way higher. Still, as I mentioned, this is a very small percentage of the course participants. So let's take this with a grain of salt. But I think what this tells us is that in general, both members and study group leaders did saw a positive side of this. And in general, we did see that more of them actually went on to obtain a course certificate. So these are preliminary and um, very good positive results. We also received very interesting reflections from our study group leaders that you can see on the screen. In general, we see that they value the opportunity of having members with diverse levels of experiences because this allows them to explain the context, the content, sorry, to go through the activities and to come with different, different levels of expertise. So this was really valuable as well. They mentioned that the study group members appreciated the possibility of solving challenges and difficulties together before we were talking about the language difficulty, but as well the content and filter on, filtering out content. So it was something that we see the members appreciated. But as well, another study group leader member mentions that the mix of experiences and approaches towards learning was actually an added advantage of these study groups. So this is a bit in a nutshell, the results of our study groups, as I mentioned, is a small um, sample jet, but um, I think it indicates that there is actually some value into blended learning in online courses. And we definitely, from our project, saw that there's value as well in bringing these online courses a more local level, and it helps to bring the community together to solve challenges and to tackle certain issues together, even in an uncertain period like right now, even if some of our study groups met fully online, still there was a lot of value in getting together, working together and solving issues together. So um, this is it from my side, but happy to take any questions. Many thanks, Eugenia. Many thanks for sharing this uh, very interesting insights. Uh, actually, it all comes to the to the fact that the element of being being part of a group is a very strong element for keeping us uh, motivated and uh, 
keep developing ourselves and having the support system we we need. I think it's very very well proved in both uh, activities here. Uh, there is a question coming from Athanasia from Greece. If there is a finding telling which approach uh, proved more successful based on what you described, Eugenia. This is a very good question, Athanasia. So I cannot give you the numbers right now. What we can do, and if you're interested, and since we're in touch, I can let you know then later on, uh, I can look at whether online versus face-to-face -face actually prove more successful in terms of certification. In general, we do not see this. I think in general, what brings the success to a study group is the possibility of gathering together and meeting. And at first, I have to say that when we started organizing these groups, we were a bit skeptical of the possibility of them meeting online because from the pilot, we had heard of meeting face to face, but not online. But in general, we saw that the success rate of those meeting online and those meeting face to face actually had very similar um, completion rates. I cannot tell you now with numbers because we hadn't looked into that, but this is a very nice, very interesting question I will definitely look into. Uh, also, participants in the chat mentioned that uh, in the main barrier was finding uh, meeting hours. Uh, I don't know if you have any suggestion for that, Christina, Thana, uh, Elena, or even Eugenia, if you have a suggestion about this, uh, something that works well about how to find uh, meeting hours to meet uh, with, your, with your study group. Uh, I think you said also about how you can keep the commitment. Participants in the chat accept that this is indeed a very difficult and challenging part. In, in my case, I use uh, collaborative tools like Doodle, where uh, all my colleagues uh, expressed their, their choice. And uh, uh, in the end, we choose the best uh, option for, for everybody. Yeah, the same for us. And, you know, if you work um, with your colleagues at school, it's in a way it's easier to, to find a common slot where to, to meet. Whereas uh, while you're working with teachers from, uh, well, in my case, from all over the region, it's a little bit more complicated. But uh, as Christina said, I, I set a doodle and uh, the majority decided. Um, normally, we uh, tend we met uh, late afternoon so that every teacher could uh, end his or her uh, school day, and uh, we met towards uh, five six o'clock in the afternoon. But it's it's not a rule. I mean we. We just came to, to this agreement and it worked for us. So you have to to study beforehand. You have to study the, the composition of your group and try to adapt. Uh, Indeed, you have to spend some time to, first of all, to set a plan on how to yeah. work in this study group. And the self-paced MOOC that we talked about is a very, uh, provides useful guidance on how to plan this process, how to support your colleagues if you want to be the leader of this process, and how how to consider all the practicalities, for instance, how to set, uh, how to find the right timings, for instance, for meeting. I shared also in the chat the, um, the tool that Christina mentioned, the Doodle, which is a very handy tool to find, to help, that can help you find the uh, right time slot for you to have a meeting. Um, I have another question from Vasiliki, who asks uh, how many times during the week, I suppose she's referring to the meetings, how many times uh, should we meet per week in the online course? What's your suggestion here? Yes, Elena. <laughs> yeah, in our, yeah, I will say one, <laughs> once a week. Yeah, not, not more, because it's, what, what, teachers can't afford, uh, too busy, yeah, they, already feel themselves very, very busy and overwhelmed by work. So in my experience, I couldn't ask for more than once a week, which was, as Christina said, or, and also Eugenia, um, while you are following the a, a MOOC, which is live, not an already ended MOOC, uh, it's very useful because you concentrate on that uh, meeting 
uh, all the issues, questions, um, doubts, um, ideas, suggestions of that module of that week. So I think that once a week is a good uh, compromise. Uh, in my case, there were two meetings, but not with the same uh, colleagues. I was in both meetings, but my colleagues were those who could uh, come in the morning and the others uh, who could come in the afternoon. So for the teachers, uh, there was only one meeting per week, as Elena said. I see also a comment in the chat from a participant uh, who says that um, uh, it's about also creating this climate of mutual trust and also to, to have it as a fun moment to meet together and learn together and not uh, like uh, an extra work that we have to do, but to really enjoy this process and uh, to have the opportunity to empower this collaborative culture that we mentioned also before. Yeah, yes, indeed. Well, we uh, we ended, uh, we always end uh, the MOOC with a small party when it was possible, when we met face to face. So the last uh, meeting is always uh, working meeting, but also having fun, uh, having some uh, sweet or some drink together. And and online we tried to replicate in a way, but of course it's not the same. Great, so let's let's come closer with our colleagues in our school and let's uh, learn together and develop our uh, competencies and our knowledge together. So yeah, we highly recommend you everybody to follow this MOOC if you want to learn more about this process. And uh, if you need any kind of support, we are here, of course, to, to support you. Feel free to check out the Teacher Academy online courses and also the training online courses or the courses on European School Net Academy and find the, the one that uh, fits your needs uh, at this period. Find your colleagues and join them together.